some of the steps needed to solve the in-building voice problems. This is, this is a critical path program that is absolutely necessary in order to determine what's best to do. The site survey defines what the signal issues are within a building. There can be many different issues. There can be signal strength issues in certain floors and not in other floors. Signal strength issues can be, uh, can be uh, carrier dependent as opposed to being location dependent. That is, you may get decent signal strength from AT&T and very poor signal strength from Verizon on the same, in the same location. So the signal strength results will actually determine what the design needs to be. Could be one solution, like a DAS or a hybrid DAS or even Wi-Fi calling, or it could be a combination that is most effective. We just ran into an example of this. In a building in Florida, AT&T signal was fine in all eight floors of a building. Verizon signal stunk, and so did Sprint and T-Mobile. What did we recommend? We recommended a single cell solution together with Wi-Fi calling. That enabled us to provide Verizon service with the single cell, uh, with the single cell, the small cell, single carrier solution, and Wi-Fi calling would provide the service for Sprint and T-Mobile. The key point is that the, the site survey will make the determination of what solution to implement and what may be the best and most cost effective. We believe in a trend, and that trend is towards Wi-Fi calling. Uh, building owners are implementing uh, a whole variety of services in a building, which includes things like Mobile, mobile staff functions using, uh, using tablets, interactive fitness facilities over Wi-Fi, and other things as well. By educating the residents um, on what T-Mobile and Sprint are cur currently offering, and by uh, having um, uh, AT&T and Verizon and any other carriers uh, coming into the building, uh, working with you to support the residents in the building, you may be able to provide a very cost-effective uh, solution for all the residents in the building. Although putting in a DAS is very expensive, and cell boost may be somewhat expensive, small cell may be somewhat expensive, there may be a combination of things that can be done using Wi-Fi calling and one of these other solutions, or the pressure from the from the the public may be enough to create the demand for AT&T and Verizon to provide Wi-Fi calling. We'll keep an eye on it. You should keep an eye on it. And if you hear anything or if you want some advice, we can certainly help you. Just give us a call. Um, we'll take Q&A right now. So we have a couple questions. Uh, first question, Dick, I'll give it to you. Do you provide a solution for first responder radio. So of into that. course we do. We provide we provide a oh, sales guy now. That's that's right. We provide a first responder solution together with Cell Boost. Um, we do it uh, we've done it in a number of different cases uh, in Florida, in uh, Washington, um, and I believe in California. So we are familiar with dealing with fire marshals one of our shareholders is one of the major uh, public safety uh, design houses in the country, and so we will do it for you. So next question, do you know when AT&T will implement Wi-Fi calling? No. Probably not, right? No, I do not. I think our view on this topic is that um, we're hopeful that the this micro announcement and the Apple announcement are the uh, impetus, if you will, to get both Verizon and AT&T to embrace this. I mean, you know, clearly when you spent billions of dollars on licensed frequencies and trumpeted your LTE networks, uh, you need to be um, judicious, if you will, in terms of stepping into the Wi-Fi calling environment. But 
I believe it's one of these market-driven um, events that uh, that neither AT&T nor Verizon will be able to ignore. But I don't think we have an exact time frame. I think once we understand what the Smith Micro announcement really was, we'll have a better idea perhaps of what the correction for Verizon and AT&T are. Uh, next question for you, Dick, also, why can't consumer boosters be used in apartment buildings? touched on that briefly, but maybe you can answer that a little more detail. Uh, the, the real issue is the donor antenna. The donor antenna is in order for you to, to bring service into an apartment, you need an, uh, an outside antenna. Um, the OTARD rules apply for terraces, they don't apply for uh, walls, uh, so most of the residents of an apartment building, especially a high rise that has no terraces, uh, the the resident cannot mount an a outside antenna and therefore cannot use a regular consumer booster. Okay? Uh, I guess I didn't answer this question well enough, but one of them was, why can't my residents just use their own Wi-Fi router that comes with their cable service or their Verizon service? The main reason why you can't do that is uh, most of these routers that you can get from a cable provider or any store like Best Buy, they either don't have QS available on the router or a lot of times it's not even enabled. Uh, you really need QS to prioritize these voice packets over data packets. Uh, with voice, you're not reconstructing the packet on the other end. They need to come in priority. Where if you do data, it can reconstruct it later on. Uh, if say someone's watching a Netflix movie on your network, uh, your router's not going to know whether to prioritize that movie or your call. You'll see a lot of latency and a lot of jitter, uh, which would lead to a drop call, garbled voice, uh, etc. Okay, next question. I think I understand this. this the question is Wi-Fi calling supported as long as the device supports it, no matter who the carrier is. Uh, no, I think the issue with this is you need you need, to, you need two people to cooperate. Wi-Fi calling, as we have described it, is distinct from an over-the-top approach, right? If you're using something like Skype and if you're using something like FaceTime, you don't need the carrier approval. It's it's an application you load and you can use, right? If you want seamless Wi-Fi calling, as we've described it, and we believe that, and only until that happens will Wi-Fi calling really supplant DAS, you need the carrier to support it on their back end, right? You need the carrier to do an interconnect on the IP part of their network. Using the middleware. Using both the middleware on the device and some back end connectivity. Correct. Right. So even though your device may support it, um, your carrier needs to support it. So it's a combination of both. Uh, next question. Have you ever been denied for a booster design? If so, and Wi-Fi calling is not an option, what is the solution for me? You're in deep yogurt. <laughs> the, an the answer, I think, is uh, if, if you have been denied uh, uh, the cell boost design, uh, the only alternative that I can think of is to actually implement a distributed antenna system. Because if you implement a distributed antenna system, the carrier will have to participate in that function. That is, the carrier will bring in a base transceiver system into the building um, to deliver service so that, that the uh, distributed antenna system will automatically be approved by the carriers. The problem, as we know and, and we face, is the process is long. Uh, you need the cooperation of multiple carriers. Uh, so it's an expensive process and it's a lengthy process, which from our perspective is all the more reason that once AT&T and Verizon embrace Wi-Fi calling, you really do control your own destiny. You don't have to wait around for RF engineers from these carriers to bless your, bless your design and, and, and wait for the implementation or equipment to show up for four different carriers in a building. Right. Is this? Um, that's it for the questions. So at this point, we want to give away a TV. 
and our marketing folks who are giving me the winner. And the winner is, drum roll please, Benjamin Cox. So Benjamin, if you're still out there, congratulations. You're the recipient of a brand new 40-inch IP-enabled TV. Our marketing department will track you down somehow and get you the TV. Uh, at this point, we want to thank everybody for attending. As Dick said before, we'll be sending out a recording of this webinar, and we'll also be emailing you a copy. We appreciate you attending, and thank you again. Bye-bye.